Hi friends, today we're going to be talking about some train photos that I came across that I thought were really fantastic and I wanted to share them with you guys. Now, before we get into that, there will be a chapter marker doodad for you to click on if you want to just jump straight there. Quick update. So I have been working on a really big project. That project is a Skillshare class for street photography. Now, first off, if you guys are interested in that, please leave a comment below because that will help me understand. That's just good data for me. I would love to hear if you guys have an interest in that. It is a like a, a full featured, lots of videos, <laughs> Skillshare class about how I do street photography, what I've learned about how to do street photography. With that said, now we're here in this moment. Today, we're breathing, okay? So we're gonna look at some photos of trains. I love you guys. <laughs> okay, first we have this wonderful photo that was taken in Amsterdam of a train that you would have a hard time finding in the US. Uh, it's blue and yellow, and we have our subject also wearing blue and yellow. What a serendipitous pairing of awesomeness. This is the type of photo that I intend to capture every time I go on a photo walk, but it's very hard to make happen. If I would have, let's just say I would have found this train, just walking around New York City, took a, took the wrong turn, ended up a little bit wet, and then Amsterdam, blue and yellow train, right? My subject probably would have been somebody in like a, like a jean suit that's like beige, and a fedora that's purple. It just, it wouldn't have, that's not this. So we have some nice repetition here, not only in the colors, but in the shapes. We have these big broad color lines and then we have windows with rounded corners repeating through the frame. That's, that's pleasant. But this looks like a movie. Like this, this has like a, almost a Wes Anderson kind of quality to it. This should be a scene in a movie, I think. She's on, she's going to, she knows that the only way that she is going to get a bagel today is to go to the bagel shop that is on the other side of a 30 minute train ride. But what she doesn't know is that this train is going to run into a really unfortunate large pile of bagels and flip off the tracks. And it's gonna be an action movie. There's gonna be bagels everywhere. You'll love it. It's a summer classic. At the end of the day, spoiler alerts, you know, you're welcome to click past. She makes it out alive and she even gets the bagel. Now, I also wanna talk about the, her expression. It's a very intense expression. It adds a lot of emotional weight to this photo. She's looking over her shoulder, stark look off into the distance, staring at something. She's covering her face a little bit. There are certain photos that I hate how good they are. You know what I mean? And this is that. Now, this is a photo that I am not convinced is real. I, I am suspecting that somebody went into Photoshop and overlaid this layer of the, you know, subway doors on top of the city. This is so perfect and beautiful and, and well done. However it was composed, it's a beautiful composition and it's a, a beautiful execution of subframing and how subframing can um, overlay contexts onto one another. We have the city, we have the subway, now we're on a subway in the city. But also you can use subframing to organize your scene and, and cut out a lot of clutter. Maybe there's something in the scene in the background that you don't necessarily want and you can use subframing to zero in on a specific part of the scene that you do want. Neato burrito. But this also has this arresting and imposing quality to it as well. And I think the light as well as the oddness of this scene uh, contribute to that feeling. A beautiful evening light, beautiful evening clouds. This is a this is a lovely photo. Next we have this photo of a person in a train, beautiful diagonal streak of light. There is a lot of focus in this scene. It's a very simple minimalistic scene. It's also a rather monotone scene other than the skin tones, very interesting. Now this photographer has a very interesting feed that I would encourage you to check out. It is full of photos that are just like this. I love to see this. Doing this is a great way to master a specific subject matter and a specific type of photo. When you when you pursue a theme, you're able to pursue mastery of, of that, you know, um, narrow focus in a way that other street photographers who are more generalists are not able to do. That diagonal streak of light is one, very pleasingly dramatic, but also it illuminates and emphasizes the subject. And, and the emotional weight of this photo is in the expression of the subject. The hand on the head, 
I'm having a rough day. You know, and that this dramatic light kind of emphasizes that emotional quality. Something that's cool is the the shirt here and the, the lines on it match the the monotone quality of the overall scene. And like I said, that then emphasizes the only color in the scene, which is the skin tones. Tight. Next but not last is this absolutely perfect photo of a, a scene that I've seen photographed many times. My friend Daniel has photographed this scene. Absolutely perfect photo. One of the things I like about this scene is how the train is so much higher than the photographer. And so you have this rather epic quality. And then the, you know, Willis Tower in the background, one of the tallest, um, you know, skyscrapers in America might be the tallest still. I forget. Is it? No, I think Freedom Tower got past it. Freedom, which is on? Tallest skyscraper. Skyscrapey? Skyscraper in America. Uh, one World Trade, there you go, yeah. Anyway, it's a big building. It's way in the distance, which uh, allows for the atmosphere to kind of be around it. It's silhouetted, it looks epic. So there's a very epic quality to this photo. You also have this beautiful cinematic warm light. It's like a nice warm hug, but also cinematic and epic. It So all together, we have here what might be the epicest photo ever to be produced. Now something that's really cool about this scene as well is down on the ground there on that road, you have a road and there are people who will go down that road in vehicles or on vehicles. And so my uh, my friend Daniel took a photo of a cyclist going down this road at, at night and had the train there as well. It was It was spectacular. This is a very fruitful location. Keep it up, guys. I think what would be fantastic is if we had a full moon behind the Willis Tower. Giant full moon. Uh, I don't know if this is even possible, but my sh Chicago photographer friends, I would encourage you to keep your eyes open, watch the cosmos, because one day, if you're ready, you're there, it might happen. Next, we have this very lovely photo, and this is a, a proper environmental portrait. We have this woman who is, is the train driver and we have her environment around her. So the environment shows us that she drives a train and her presence as well, as well as the expression on her face has a very human quality to it. Her presence is very human as well. Presence, expression, human. She's a human driving a train. I love this very thoughtful look on her face. It helps, it helps me to connect with her and think, oh, what's she, what's she thinking about? What's, what's her life about? What's her story? Does she like bagels from Amsterdam? Now, I've taken photos from this angle before, possibly the same train station. I'm not sure how many train stations in New York allow for this particular angle. But when I was there, I noticed that you could walk across over the top of the train platform, right? So you're, you're over the tracks, which allows for, for one, you're up in the air, but you're also over the tracks. So you have this angle that can be very fruitful. You have the trains coming through, you have people getting on and off the trains, cool stuff. But this is a very lean composition. There's no clutter here. It's, it's very straightforward and to the point. And, then, and that's a really nice thing about it. You also see the, the beautiful light on her face that may have been manipulated in post as well. But we also have these splashes of red. We have her lips. We have the red light on the upper right hand side. And then we have the uh, red, red or yeah, red, a rectangle around the headlight. I approve. Now this one's very different than the ones we've been looking at so far, which have very elegant compositions. This one is a quick moment. Uh, it's a very well done composition, but not elegant in the same way. It shows our humanity and connectedness, the willingness to help one another. If, you know, for example, a kid is about to be crushed by a door. <laughs> so this is a photo that takes awareness, talent, and technical readiness with your camera. And all of those things are executed very well here. But there's there's a poetry to this composition because you, you have the boy in the center coming through the door and you have two hands coming in from either side to hold the doors open. It's, it's quite wonderful. This photo is a great example of the importance of being quick on your feet. And I also love the edit. The photographer, Paola, she always has beautiful um, tones. So this is a, you know, no exception. Last but Certainly not least, we have this masterpiece. My friend Daniel took this, and you have leveled up, my friend. <laughs> this is an exceptional photo. 
This is ridiculous. You make me want to vomit. This belongs on walls. I want to tattoo this across my back. We have a stunning convergence of elements here. We have a train. We have a train that's going the opposite direction. We have the Willis Tower and we have the city. And then we have beautiful lights. And then we have the clouds, the nightness. How do? How do? This photo has a kinetic flow to it. You can feel the trains moving through. You know, it's, it's, it's this. There's a lot to look at here in terms of lights and elements, but it's organized with points of focus. We have the headlights on the train acting as a, as a distinct point of focus. Um, on, the, on the front down at the bottom left here. Then we have the entire Willis Tower, which is like a mountain, and then you have the lights on the Willis Tower on top. And then you have various points of light that act as little points of focus throughout the, the, the photo. You have some, some really interesting repetition here as well with the train cars in the background, for example. You know, they, they have lights on them that are repeating. Um, they're not exactly the same, but they're basically the same shapes and lights. You have the lights on top of the, the, the green and red lights on top of the buildings as well. You have the fact that you have two trains crossing at the same time, that's that's repeating. And then you have the city itself having this repeating rectangular quality that's that's quite interesting and pleasing. It, is, it has like a cyberpunk feel almost. But you know, these, these, these red and green lights on top really help it feel a little less dystopic. And that's always nice. It's like, hey guys, we're happy buildings. We're happy buildings, and then the train's like, I'm a happy train. <laughs> but once again, on the idea of the, the Willis Tower acting as a mountain, that's one of the, the really cool things about Chicago is that you have this, this magnificent, huge tower poking out from the city that you can always use in the background of your photos to organize them and create a, a clear, um, strong point of interest. Really enjoy the focal length used here. Uh, very well done framing and, and just general composition. Uh, really, it's a masterful composition. This, this photo is exceptional. I love it. I love it. I love it. So many talented photographers out there, man. Sometimes we gotta stop looking at the sad things on the internet. Go, go look at some, some beautiful photos. There are plenty of them to behold. I hope you found this video and these photos inspirational and educational. If you did like this video, if you wanna hit the like button, I really appreciate that. If you have any thoughts, please feel free to share them below. I would love to see them and engage. And if you want to see more of these videos, then if you hit the subscribe button, that would be fantastic. I would appreciate that tremendously. I hope you guys have a lovely day. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.